Thank you for watching this video tutorial. It is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold for Cinema 4D at mographplus.com. Make sure to visit our website and check the entire course out. Let's get started with this tutorial. In this lesson, we are going to take a look at the new thin film shader in Arnold for Cinema 4D. This shader reproduces the effect of thin film interference on a surface and the most obvious example that comes to mind would be to create a soap bubble material using this thin film shader. This effect occurs on very thin transparent surfaces whose thickness is approximately that of the wavelengths of visible light which is around 500 nanometer. Obviously, if you are interested in the physical aspect of this shader and how it works in real life, you can check out related articles on web, but for now I'm going to jump right in and start working with the shader and create some realistic and funny looking bubbles and whatnot. If I run the IPR, in the scene we have an Arnold sky that uh, provides the HDRI lighting and it has visible in refraction option enabled as well. And a simple sphere that's gonna work as our soap bubble. You can see it has an Arnold parameters tag with opaque disabled. Also, it has a Cat Clark subdivision with iteration set to three, so we can get some displacement mapping. Also, in the material manager, you can see we have uh, this shader network that's called Thin Film. I just renamed it, and this is already applied to the sphere. And if I open it up, you can see. Uh, we only have some basic displacement mapping set up just to make the sphere look a bit more organic. We have a normal displacement node with scale set to something like 0.1 and a simple procedural noise with scale value set to 2 as a displacement map and this gives us that organic look on the sphere that you see in the IPR. Now let's add a standard shader to our network and connect it to the Arnold Beauty port using Alt W V shortcut. Increase the specular weight to something like 0.35. It really depends on how much reflection you want here. And reduce the roughness to 0.01. When you want to use thin film shader like when we use complex IR shader, you need to make sure that the Fresnel effect is turned off because the thin film shader does its own Fresnel calculation. If the shader we are trying to apply the thin film shader to didn't have any transparency like Mother of Pearl for example, we don't need to change anything in the refraction section to make the material transparent. In that case, we could have connected the thin film shader to the specular color and be done with it. But here we are trying to create a soap bubble shader uh, so we do need transparency. So in the refraction section, let's increase refraction weight to 0.99 or a smaller value, you, you know, we can adjust it later on to get exactly what we want, but 0.99 for now. Right now it seems so reflective and refractive and it doesn't look like a bubble. And that's because, first of all, we don't have Fresnel and that's why it looks so unrealistic and there is no thin film shader yet, obviously. Now it's time to add the thin film shader. Press Control tab and search for thin and here uh, is our thin film shader. Press enter to add the thin film shader to the network and connect it to the specular color of your standard shader. And voila! we have a beautiful realistic soap bubble as you can see in the IPR. Let's take a look at the thin film shader parameters here. We have thickness mean and this is the minimum thickness of the thin film in nanometers. Basically the coloring of the shader depends on how thick the thin film is. So let's try 50. As you can see we have a monochromatic bubble here. Let's go to 100 still not much of a change. Let's try 150 and now we start to introduce some colors. Let's try 200, more colors, 250 uh, which is the default value. So as you can see based on the particular look that you are after you can use a different minimum value. Let's try 300, 
350 nanometers. In this case, let's use the default value of uh, 250 nanometers. Thickness max is the maximum thickness of the thin film in nanometers. And as I'm adjusting it, you can see it really doesn't affect the overall look at all. And that's because the thickness value down here that defines the actual thickness of the film between the specified mean and max thickness values is set to zero. So the shader is like a switch here. So the shader right now uses only the minimum thickness value because the thickness value is set to zero. But if I change the thickness value to one, now we are only using the thickness max value. And now if I start changing the max value, you can see it actually affects the look and uh, now the mean value wouldn't have any effect on the look as you can see. We can use something in between like 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.4 as the thickness value and that way mix and match the minimum and maximum values. Or we can use something like a noise node or a ramp instead of this thickness value and that way add some variation to the overall effect. Let's make sure the mean value is set to 250 and max is set to 400. Add a noise map to the network and connect it to the thickness input of the thin film shader. Let's also connect the noise to the beauty port and see how it looks on the sphere. Maybe we can increase the scale to something like two. So basically where we have a darker value in the noise map, we are going to be using the thickness mean value and where it's brighter, we're going to be using thickness max value or in between values, obviously, based on the grayscale um, values of the noise map. I'm going to decrease the amplitude value to something like 0 0.5, 0 0.55, maybe 55, so we have less contrast. Now, if I connect back the standard shader, we have this variation where both min and max thickness values are being used based on our noise map. Let me increase the max value to 800 so you can see that variation more obviously. Now, you can clearly see this variation and how powerful this shader can be. Let's try 1000 as well. Now let me just get back to 800 for now. Also, let's try 100 for the mean value. 150, 200, 250, and 300. So it's possible to pretty much create all sort of thin film looks using this shader because it's really powerful and allows you to uh, create some nice variations. Let's set the, or you can, you know, animate the noise map using the offset value. Just animate the offset value on the noise node and create some, you know, uh, look beautiful look and changing look on your bubble. Okay, now let's set the min value to 200 and max value to 400 and we get this beautiful so bubble like shader. Obviously, it's not quite accurate and we can adjust some stuff, but it looks nice. We have IOR medium, which is the refractive index of the uh, medium surrounding the material. Normally, this is set to one for air. IOR film is the refractive index of the medium that the thin film is made of. If I go to a lower value like 1.1, we have, uh, you can see the look changes drastically. Here we have a stronger frontal effect. You can see the frontal angles are basically non-reflective and the edges are more reflective. And as I increase the value, the reflections become uh, more even on the entire surface. Uh, so you really need to find the exact IR value of what you are trying to create and put it here. Maybe we can use a lower value for the IR for, you know, something like bubble, but in this case, let's use 1.5. And IR internal is the refractive index of the medium below the thin film. Let's me set it back to one. So that's about thin film shader in Arnold for Cinema 4D. See you in the next lesson of this update for our course comprehensive introduction to Arnold for Cinema 4D at mographplus.com.
Thank you for watching this tutorial. It was a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold for Cinema 4D. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. See you next time.